Okay. In theory, we are now live on the interwebs. I'm fairly sure we are. I could be mistaken. We might be undead on the interwebs. And no one's just told me. But never mind about that. Hello, and welcome to Path Tactics. My fault. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure your current situation is definitely not your fault. There, there are parties at fault. More than one, in fact. That, that can share the blame. And oddly enough, considering the technology around you, Chroma is not one of those parties. I'm as shocked as anyone, honestly. But never mind about that. Hello, welcome to Path Tactics Season 3. This is a 5th edition homebrew Dungeons & Dragons campaign where all of the PCs are kobolds. Because why not? Kobolds are fun. I am Crash. I will be your DM for the evening tonight. I am joined by a bunch of awesome people, including Ellie, Eo, Jen, Cindy. Archbeth is hanging out in chat. My assumption is an LFA will appear shortly and yell out yeet because that's what LFA does. Now they're streaming. Ah, so, um... They are drawing Star Wars things. Fun. Okay, so, uh, rocks fall, everyone dies. I'm going to go watch a stream. <laughs> <laughs> uh, roll up the first level characters for next time when we start season four. Uh, I actually have started planning what season four will be, but never mind about that. Wow. Okay. Yes, it, it's the skeleton of a plan, but Neat. I don't expect to be starting season four anytime soon anyway. Ooh, skeletons. I mean, I want to say, no, there won't be skeletons, but that would be a bold-faced lie. What happened last time, though? Escape pod. Mm. Yep, kind of. Oh, escape pod. That means you're all safe, right? You escaped. But we didn't want yes. to escape. We're safe, though. Um... That depends on a number of factors that we don't have information on. Like, does this thing have any form of thrust? And are we on a re-entry vector? And is the big ship about to attack the escape pod? Cindy's comment makes me worry because I just checked Twitch to see whether we were live. And I happened to see the episode title. <laughs> uh, well, I did... I am getting on this bend of naming each of the consecutive episodes a word that begins with R, and re-entry is arguably a word that begins with oh, R. No. Oh, boy. I did not know that when I made that comment. So, last session, we fought our way to what we thought was the bridge, only we didn't kill anybody. And then we got into the bridge, and the... Uh, the captain said, okay, well, I'm not the captain anymore, so ha-ha, and opened a window, and we were on an escape pod flying away from the main carrier. I thought it was an uh, office, not the bridge. Oh, it well. was, in fact, an office, yes. Okay, an office, but uh, I was mistaken then, but either way. So, yeah, we were, we were in a hoping, room. Yeah, we, we were trying to talk to the highest-ranking captain to negotiate a peace treaty, and... If I remember right, he uh, decided to react by simply detaching his office from the rest of the ship. Yeah. King okay. Missile will be writing a song about us pretty soon. I so, think what that song would be, but anyway, go ahead. So, Daldane, you very quickly become aware, because I can open character sheets and see what passive perception is, <laughs> that everyone seems to have stopped moving. Okay. Well, not everyone. Uh, Moe's over there. He's still moving. He's He has walked over to the window and is looking out at it right now. Are you sure you want my, pa Daldane's passive perception? Well, you well, certainly don't want my passive perception. Well, Daldane is the only one who notices this because Daldane is noticing all the other kobolds have also stopped moving. Uh, I'm just we're saying... We're not weightless, are we? No, you are not aware of any of this happening. Oh. Daldane is the only one aware that any of this is happening because everyone else I understand has stopped moving has stopped moving everything becomes clear and Mo is still looking out that window and he just takes a deep breath and lets it out very slowly we've really made a mess of this I wasn't going to say it but it's true isn't it well it's not unfixable no I'm, I'm sure you've got half a dozen plans already. I have a few of my own. But too much of a show of force, I think. Mm. Do you have any family? Well, I've got my clan. Uh, no offspring. Not sure who my parents are. 
Are you close to your clan? Well, I've been on tour for the last five years, so I don't really check in with them all that much, but no, I guess not. And Mo nods at this. I have some family, and I think it's safe to say that you've checked in with your clan more often than I should have been checking in with my family. Hmm. I, you know, people don't seem to like me very much. We, That's we too can, bad. We can argue the reasons. That there's some validity to it, but I assumed I was keeping them safe. You know, I kind of did too, after a fashion. This is, this is a problem that we need to fix. And we're going to fix it, I have no doubt. If I was not involved at all, I'm sure that you'd be fixing it without my help. But I am very distracted right now. Understandably. You've killed a god, haven't you? Well, we killed something that people worshipped as a god. And we banished a couple more. Um, and we might have woken one up, but uh, but I don't think we killed it. Or at least, if we did, I wasn't there. Mo nods at this. For all my years, I've never actually had the pleasure. Hmm. But I think that's going to change soon. Well, I hope it does. It's really, I, I mean, it's a singular experience. I mean, I think I know a few people who've done it more than once, but yes. Well, on to business. Uh, there's not much of a charge left in this little uh, gadget that I've activated. I usually uh, make use of it when I need a moment to collect my thoughts, put that mm. way. Um, I'm not Crash entirely the sure. Are in the room. Well, there's the party. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's Zenosha. Um, I'm not really counting player characters that would be in the room if the player was here. Gotcha. Um, but so that would be Zenosha, JR, Zax, Chroma, Neri, Daldane, Mo, Two, Gif, and Captain Tennessee, and also Cobalt, Rhodey, and Meitner. So that's 13, I think. Okay. So what do you say we see if there's any information we can get from Tennessee that isn't just infuriating? And if that's not any use, then we try something else. Okay. All right. I think I was standing over here. Okay. And Have I moved? Three. I don't think I've moved. If you didn't tell me you moved, I'm willing to say you didn't move. Okay. Okay. Three, two... Mo presses a button on some device that he is putting back into um, a shirt pocket. And as soon as the button is pressed, apparently one of the GIF was halfway through a sentence. Say, this is most irregular. Explain yourself. What's there to explain? I oh, 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 oh. I know what there is to explain. Does this thing have thrusters on it? Are we, mm, like, no. actively heading towards the... Okay. So, um... If I open the door, is there going to be an airlock, or is there just going to be space? It will just be space. <laughs> oh, better not do that, then. Try out. I was going to go outside. I mean, you're more than welcome to. It's perfectly fine. Uh, you... you're a groundling, aren't you? Uh, I feel like I should be insulted. It's... Uh, it just means someone who grew up on a planet. That is correct. Uh, so... Essentially, anything outside of a planet's atmosphere tends to hold on to a little atmosphere of its own. It can go stale over time, but the air is perfectly breathable. This room that we're in is not actually even airtight. If you oh. open the door, there won't be any rapid decompression. It'll just be there. Well, I was worried we'd start losing air faster, and I, I don't want us to do that. And um, anyway, I'm going to leave now. Goodbye. Wait and a Roma, moment. It's okay. I have... Um, actually, I should wait a moment. What were you going to do? Well, the thing is, if you open the door, all the air will rush out, and we can't breathe vacuum. I literally just said the opposite. Oh. Yeah, I wasn't sure how fast we were going to uh, start losing it and how much this had, so... We're losing more air from the gift companions of yours breathing than you would from opening the door. The captain, for all of his arrogance, does speak true. Opening the door would have no ill effect unless one of you happens to have a very large fan. Zenosha 
thinks about making a comment that if the GIF are the biggest threat to the mission right now, that means they should jump out the airlock themselves. But she keeps it to herself just barely. She might make a funny face at them, though. <laughs> Why do I get the suspicion that even though Gorka is not aware of this scenario at all, <laughs> somehow Gorka still approves? <laughs> anyway, so, um, do you have a big plan or do you want me to, um, fix things? No, I have a plan. Because I can fix things. How would you do that? Well, I'm gonna go outside and I'm gonna be a thruster. Hmm. You're going... Aldane opens and closes her mouth several times. <laughs> to be a... I know that you just said words in a particular order that form a sentence, but... What? I'm going to go outside, and I'm going to be a thruster. Oh, Chroma, did you finish that jetpack you were working on, I take it? Chroma? I mean, that too. That too? That too. I say, how much thrust do you intend to generate? There does seem to be a lot of mass here. Uh, about 30 gallons. That might not be sufficient based on our current velocity. Hmm. What if we tried the Grenadier propulsion method? I... Do believe that it's still experimental? Well, yes, but it might actually work. We don't have enough grenades. Oh, well, it's worth a thought. Wouldn't be enough um once, or wouldn't be enough as a sustained uh, propul propulsion method because um there's a difference. It's well, I'm not a hundred percent up on the mathematics behind it, mind you. I'm more of a big theory person, but the whole idea is you get a sufficient number of grenades. And you keep tossing them over the side of your ship, uh, cooking them in advance. No, which no, is, no, no. Um, I got that part. Um, I'm still trying to figure out the, the other thing. Chroma, rather than yeah. constant thrust, it's bursts of thrust. And since we don't have much to slow us down, any burst of thrust tends to last a long time. Actually, where uh, Daldane points at the elf, sort of a sweeping point. Um, looking out the window... Where is this escape pod going to end up? You aren't 100% sure, but... No, 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 I'm asking the elves. Oh. <laughs> um, the captain just shrugs. Cobalt goes to look out the window, and I make a roll for Cobalt. Yeah, I, I figured Cobalt, Cobalt would be the one... I mean, Cobalt's a pilot, the captain's just a captain. Cobalt is not just a pilot, Cobalt is also a wizard, which is why... Cobalt ah. is a pilot. Oh, that makes sense. Yes. Um, considering how helms work, it makes perfect sense. But Cobalt looks out the window and says, Well, um, I have some good news, some better news, and some bad news. Uh, the good news, since no one's asking, so I guess their science meant Cobalt get to the point, is mm. if you look, you can see the moon there. And there is a small bright dot. And you can almost make out the details of your planet over there. And there's a much smaller dot. Mm -hmm. So we're moving away from them. We probably won't crash on any of those. Okay. So, what's so we're, our trajectory means that we're probably pretty much going to smack into the celestial sphere at some point. I mean, we might. It's kind of hard to see the sphere from a distance is this is a black thing we so, flew the red star out to the edge of the sphere and we were moving a lot faster than this i think we have to worry about running out of oxygen more than smashing into the sphere that and food yes oh sure i was just curious what angle it was going to rebound at um you know i kind of want to watch a an escape pod sort of billiards around the celestial sphere um Okay. And this is the powerful friend that you thought we needed. Cobalt is referring um, directly to the younger Cobalts. Chroma. She's the most charismatic person we know. Uh -huh. Did you pick up any uh, tools the last time you were on the moon? Oh, yeah. More than one? Oh, yeah. Will you give one to me and one to uh, Mo, please? Uh, what are you going to do with it? Oh, they'll be given back to you. In perfect condition, I assure you. Okay, 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 but, um... I know that you're not saying a thing because that's what I do when I want it to be a surprise. So what are you going to do with it? With it? Nothing. Uh, oh. I hand a small object to Mo. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah, let's do that. 
Chroma hands over her tools. I hand a small object to Mo and say, escape hatch. Never I know when you need believe, to get out of town quickly. I do believe I understand where you're coming from, and I'm happy to follow your lead. Okay, um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, yeah, I'll let you take the group um, and your gif. Uh, elves, if you want to live, come, o- come over by me. You are suddenly surrounded by elves, not the captain. He doesn't move. You sure, Captain? Oh, no, please. Don't let me stop you. I'm curious to see what will happen. And this pings something in Neri's memory, I think. Okay. The joy of playing two characters. (laughs) Yeah, no kidding. I can't remember which one of them knows this. Get on my level (laughs) is all I have to say about that. (laughs) Well, whoever's memory it pings in, you're controlling both of them. So what is the thing? The thing is... Someone mentioned a teleport ward. It was not mentioned during an actual game. Oh, okay. But I thought it was. It I'm may sorry. have been mentioned. I thought Cobalt said it for some reason. No, it wasn't Cobalt. Well, wait, it might have been. Um, or or one of the other elves. We can argue that during the time it took to get here, there were conversations, and one of the conversations was that most Elf Armada ships are warded against teleportation as a means of preventing um, boarding parties from arriving unexpectedly. Right. Which would be why you had to fly all the way there instead of just having some wizard teleport you there. Gotcha. Okay, says Daldane then. Um, Then this is going to suck for a second. Wait, we don't need to teleport from inside. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, Oh, okay. Actually... No. As soon as Chroma mentions that we're not going to be teleporting from inside, Zenosha is going to be pulling out a rope and kind of motioning to Mo to get permission to tie the rope around Mo and herself and whoever else wants in on this. I was just going to that. I'd offer my rope, but um, I don't have any rope because it went to the astral plane. Right. Yeah. I think I have some rope. Your rope. Okay. Is you all tie the... yourself to Mo. Okay. Uh, huh? If anybody else... Oh, I have rope. Who said that about... That was Mo. I, I only Mo. have four voices, and the captain and Mo are too similar. Oh, okay. So Mo said something about the astral. Mo is r- realizing that Chroma is casually saying that her rope has ended up in the astral plane. Right. Because it has. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's a fair cop. There it is. Yeah, I tried to play Bomb Squad, but it turned out it was just an extra-dimensional scent um, perfumer. And relatedly, it turns out it was an extra-dimensional scent perfumer. Okay, that's actually kind of very fascinating. Story. But, you know, after we relocate, I would like to have a word with you. Because while I imagine normally when you say things like that, people are shocked and aghast and wonder how this has happened... I'm interested in repercussions, and I would love to have this conversation. Anyway, uh, yes, I do believe I'm firmly tied off. Uh, Everyone else good to go? I'll tie the elves to myself, yeah. Uh, Corporal, no, Corporal, you you are in the the middle of the line. You probably should not be the first out the door. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I'll be the first out the door. That might work. Whee! (laughs) Off we go. Now, do you walk out the door or do you jump out the door confident jump. that you're tied off? <laughs> okay, said, so She's jumping out the door. <laughs> so cut to an external view yeah. of this escape hat of uh, the escape pod, and a door opens up by sliding into the wall, and then suddenly a a kobold wearing half plate is jettisoned in a self propelled manner, and then just like hits the end of a tether. <laughs> Bonk. Got it. Right, She's well, really enjoying let's this all experience. Jump out now. All right, here we go. If you Hop. don't mind me, I'll walk. But sure. I just want to make sure we get it enough distance because I don't know how wards work. Uh, we'll probably be fine. Can I roll Arcana? Go ahead. Twenty-seven. You'll probably be fine. the The ward is probably built into the wall somehow. So as long as you're on, you're on the other side of the wall. Yeah, it's probably the walls. Okay, I'll trust you. Okay, so you head out one at a time. Um, 
For the record, I take a deep breath before I go. <laughs> and when you step out, you find that there is, in fact, an atmosphere on the outside of the escape pod. And you are currently, well, not you, because I think Chrome is not tied off in the same group that Zenosha is. But whichever group is tied off, whoever's tied off next to Chroma has a Chroma balloon at this point <laughs> because the escape pod doesn't exactly have enough gravity to pull Chroma back very well. <laughs> Chroma is, has heard the counter of endless water out and is experimenting with using it on the low level as a maneuvering thruster. Give me a dexterity save. <laughs> 21. Okay. Um, you successfully avoid a jet propulsion powered impact into the outer wall of the escape pod. <laughs> you're, you're more really just going in a not so slow circle at the end of your tether. And I love that someone would argue there's no plot taking place here right now, but I'm living for this. This is glorious. Okay. The elves and I are going to follow everybody out. Uh, Daldane, real quick. Yes. What would what would you have asked the captain, assuming he was uh, in any way reasonable about the situation? Oh, sorry, I might have spoken a bit too loud. Well, you know, I hadn't thought that far ahead. Hmm. I in see. general, we are going to ask other than the moon, what do they want, and try to start negotiations from there. Oh, that's uh, a good idea. I, I think I like that idea. Are done. Oh well, I mean. That I was the plan. The okay. Next time, and not an office. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure they they're not going to have a detachable bridge. <laughs> Cobalt just says, you know, maybe let's not find out. Anyway, as soon as everybody is out and away from the uh, away from the escape pod, office, whatever it is, uh, Daldine cast teleport to the moon. And you are using the tool that was acquired on the moon mm -hmm. as a means of focus so that you have a larger chance of success. The of association, the moon. The, an associated object. Yes. And an associated object gives me, it gives me on target with a, a one to 100. So I should roll that. <laughs> I mean, you definitely can if you want to. Go right ahead. Wow. D100, I uh, rolled a 63. <laughs> Okay, very good. Um, so, there is a sort of blink of an eye, and you are no longer on the outside of an escape pod. Congratulations! Yay. Mo, if you will. Chroma, here's the problem. You were still airborne, or spaceborne. Yeah, we all fall to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chroma was the only one that was demonstrably not currently on the level with the rest of you. Or... Mo, depending on how you define on the level, but never mind about that. <laughs> um, well, Mo was the one ca you, casting the spell <laughs> out of the spell gem. So, okay. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna roll a die. Chroma, you take one point of falling damage. Okay. And yes, Daldane keeps teleport in a spell gem because it's really important to be able to get out of dodge quickly if you need to. Well, um. I'm not going to lie, Mo doesn't have teleport prepared either, but also had a magical item that allowed for it. Well. M Mo is kind of like um, Jarlaxle or Batman in that regard. If you do re need shark repellent, Mo probably has some somewhere. Welcome to my workshop. <laughs> it looks a little, Just um... Up from the floor. <laughs> worn down. And yeah, in fact... People as you look around, you realize you are not in Chroma's workshop. Oh, okay. Hmm. I Chroma, guess we're not in my workshop. I thought we'd go to my workshop. That's weird. Chroma, you acquired those tools on the moon, but they were from somewhere else. So we're probably somewhere oh. else on the moon. That's... Or not on the moon. Are, are we you in are the same not place? on the moon. All right. You are, you are not on the escape pod. You are on firm ground. But the Isn't... walls around you are very dilapidated. One could say that they are even torn asunder in multiple locations. There are tools and refuse and devices, most of which don't look to be functional in any way, shape, or form, strewn all about. Weird. 
Is there a Where window we, we can look at? Uh, well, there's a giant hole in the wall. I would like to look, look at the, the giant, giant hole, hole in the wall. <laughs> We're doing okay. this Scooby Doo thing. Okay, so you, from the from an exterior view, you see this building that has been um, rampaged through, giant hole in the side. More than one, in fact. But there's one giant hole in the side in particular where we see a whole bunch of cobalt heads, one above another, all peek around <laughs> a corner. Daldane, you know where you are. Oh, where am I? The worst thing you ever did to yourself was very close to here. That describes a lot of things. I'm thinking of one particular in-game event. What where afterwards you kept saying, ow. Oh. You are on top of the tallest mountain on the planet. Inside yeah, the right. remains of Definitely a workshop. Definitely not my workshop. But it was some. Chroma, where did you get these tools? The moon! That's where I got these tools. I don't know where the people who got these tools got these tools. Apparently they weren't tools that I got. Apparently they, um, think they spent well, more time down here than in my workshop. This is the place they're associated with, yeah. Um, are there heavy footsteps anywhere nearby? Um... Depending on how recent you're referring to. Actually. I'm not looking for footprints. I'm looking for footsteps. So the sounds, right? Oh, yeah. You're Is not everything going thump, thump, thump. Give me a perception check. Uh, both of us will make this perception check. The joys of playing two PCs in the same adventure. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> it's been done before. That's a nine and a 15. You hear nothing that sounds like giant footprints, or footsteps, okay. rather. Can I do a perception check? You may. But keep in mind, a 15 detected no audio. Yeah, I was oh, still, well, I, I didn't roll real well. <laughs> I failed, failed, failed. Ooh. Okay. And oftentimes I have 15 be my target number, unless I'm dealing with level 19 characters in the entire mm. party, in which case the number might be 20 or higher. <laughs> yeah, but I just most of you are not level 20. Mm -mm. <laughs> I like Beth's suggestion. Off in the distance, we hear a Tarasque I'm so quiet. I'm so quiet. <laughs> now, the worst implications of this would be that it could speak. It's been its head for five years. <laughs> it's the only song it's ever heard. <laughs> Mo looks at the tool that uh, he was handed before giving it back to Chroma. And he, he rotates it and says, I think I see what the problem is. And as he rotates the tool, he shows you um, a manufacturer's mark on the handle. It is uh, a little stamp that appears to be an image of a blank scroll inside a circle. Oh, no. Oh, we're probably supposed to be here or something. Well... That's the sign for Ogma, and I believe Marwai has mentioned a group of Ogmites who are working for the Tiamat cult for a while. Mm -hmm. Is yes. this a workshop then? I mean... <sighs> okay. I'm uh, told okay, that they we, were uh, instrumental in solving that issue as well. They... Oh, they before, definitely were. Before they forgot everything, they altered the ritual so that it wouldn't just bring... Tiamat over, but also her estranged brother. Yeah, that was um, really fascinating. I mean, watching all those heads come out of one portal, that was just weird. I mean, anyway, um, I'm pretty sure it was fantastic to watch. As fascinating as the situation was, I'm kind of glad I was on the other side of the planet at the time. Oh, I wish I had been on the other side of the planet at the time. Um, I imagine so. I'm... I'm quite glad that certain people weren't uh, since they're the ones who closed it. But uh, in any case, um, if these are Ogmanite tools, then there's a cave nearby that we can, well, I was going to say use for shelter, but uh, shelter's easy. Well, yes, I've got Tiny Hut prepared, and I imagine you've got something fancier. So, there's a workshop um, uh, around here. My, my dwelling is... Yeah. Magnificent, um, I'm Yes, told. it's a workshop around here. There's... Uh, You're standing in it. This is what's left of it, I think. Little pieces everywhere. Well, uh, yes. There's a there's an engineering workshop here that has been kind of destroyed by gods and uh, Tarask. That's why I was listening to for, for Footprints. 
or, or footsteps. Wow. Uh, and there's a cave that's a metalworking workshop that's pretty easily closed off from everything else. But uh, we don't really need a habitat right now. What we need is some food. So uh, let me work on that dwelling, uh, and you guys can explore. Well, if you don't mind, I happen to know there is a, a certain pit in the, the center of uh, the top of the spire, and I have a bag of holding that is not at capacity, so I'll be Oh, ready. yeah, the money pit. Money pit? Yeah, in literal the sense. Where the diamonds come from? Oh, wow, okay. Anyway, I want to go make all the investigation rolls. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Make all the investigation rules. I am looking forward to seeing that it is on my screen that that says investigation chroma, investigation chroma, investigation chroma, investigation. Chroma. Oh, I could roll in D and D Beyond. Uh, I, um, I'm joking. Do 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 it however you want to do, do it. Whatever you want. Neri is gonna stake out the surrounding area and make sure that nothing's coming to kill us. Daldane is gonna make a actually given the elves and Mo and the gif. A fairly standard Morden Cannon's magnificent mansion. Okay. Zax is going to follow around Chroma just to make sure she doesn't get herself killed. Zenosha's going to help Yuri with scouting the area for danger. Okay. 21 um, to investigate the workshop. There are all kinds of wonderful things in here that are so fascinating, even though they are very obviously broken. Where did they get these wonderful toys? <laughs> I mean, they're Ogbenites. <laughs> okay. Broken things can be... Well, sometimes they can be fixed. Sometimes they can be studied. I'm going to find... Look for things that are maybe slightly less broken, such that they might be, um... mess with Okay. Well, I'm not going to require additional rolls. You did get a 21. Uh-huh. So, you do find a few that look particularly interesting. There is a box that one side of it appears to be made of a glass... Um, it does look like it was more recently smashed than the rest of the stuff. <laughs> but it's got all kinds of wonderful little parts inside. This. Somebody that was frustrated, I guess. That's why you break stuff. I mean, that's why I break stuff. But based on all the grime that's on it, and there's spots that grime is not on it, it was broken fairly recently. You could probably tinker with it and fix it. Ooh. Uh, Neri, with a roll of 27 for survival, you discover that you are definitely not alone up here. Oh. Off, of, off in the distance, you do see um, your best guess is they are a dragonborn or a very tall kobold or perhaps a very long kobold. <laughs> Cindy knows better than I do. Um, but they don't seem to have noticed you, but they are walking around off in the distance. Uh, unless I have a reason to, I'm going to make sure they don't spot us. Okay. I'm going to give Chroma my bag of holding, because I know she's going to want to pick up all the things, and it doesn't have much stuff in it yet. Really? Mm-hmm. It's, it doesn't Thank have much. Thank you so much. much. I promise not to blow this one up and send us to the astral plane again. Yeah, it's there's plenty of room. I mean, it's got that necklace with all the dragon heads on it from like way back when, and it's got the nuts and bolts from when we got to beat that giant robot. You remember that? That was... So uh -huh. much fun, and uh, I cool. think uh, I think it's actually got the five cans of spam we found in the moon's kitchen. So I don't know if you want those, <laughs> but they're in there. I mean, I'm not going to eat them, but they might be good for bait. So yeah, here, take it. For the record, those cans of spam are as edible as they were when they were manufactured. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> this it's does not necessarily there, mean that they are edible. I just said that they're as right. edible as they right. were on their there. date of manufacture. Yeah. Oh, right. Mo wanted to say something to me. I completely forgot. That's okay. Okay. I will, I will argue that a considerable amount of time has been spent sifting through the remains of this workshop. You did find one uh, thing that was too large to put in your recently transferred bag of holding that it looks like part of a neck, but it's a very large neck, like the kind of neck you would see on a dragon but it is entirely mm -hmm. mechanical. Um, any head that would have been on one side of it is clearly not there anymore. Uh, that looks like it got ripped off or broken off at some point. And there is more recent damage on the other side of the neck, the wider end of the neck, 
where it looks like it recently fell off of whatever it was attached to. Oh, weird. That must have been a prototype. What? Oh, there was a, um, a three-headed mechanical dragon that we beat up a while back. Yes, uh, but you didn't beat it up on top of the spire, so this is fascinating. Well, Daldane's assuming that the Ogmanites built it, and this is just like a prototype that didn't quite work out or something. Yeah, possibly, but you did a pretty good job exploring up here five years ago. Although, on the other hand, most of your exploring up here five years ago was after you cast a very powerful wish... Yeah, I wasn't paying a whole lot of attention. Well, you were paying a lot of attention just to your situation, not the situation of your environment. Right. Okay, and at this point, I will say that you see Mo. I want to say walking back, but let's face it. This is Mo we're talking about, and he just filled a bag of holding with diamonds. Mo is swaggering (laughs) back. (laughs) With a resting smug expression on his face. He may or may not be whistling. Right, you wanted to talk to me. I completely forgot, um, because, you know, workshop... that's right. About the astral plane. Right. You got there, I imagine, the traditional accidental way. Uh Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that was still possible. Oh, yeah. That still works. This, for want of a better metaphor, opens some doors... Up to this point, I only knew that the ethereal plane was a destination while uh, that wonderful uh, contraption you have on the moon was functional. Jack's just um, giving uh, Mo a confused look, but just listening. You've gone completely silent. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. How do you know about the contraption on the moon? I know a lot of secrets. And I may have, on occasion, done business with a particular group of dragonborn. Oh. Yes. Now, granted, they didn't quite know what to make of it, but they did know it was designed to keep people safe. And something, something, Tiamat said, keep it working, something. Hmm. You didn't know that part? Um... I have no idea how we would know what Tiamat does and doesn't say to people who follow Tiamat on account of we don't do that. Okay, but you did meet with the Tiamat followers that were on the moon, right? I mean, the ones that were still alive. So you had discussions with them, and they let you know about the various things that were and were not working anymore. Um, they didn't tell us much about the... I don't think they told us anything about the, uh, contraption. Mo blinks at you and takes another deep breath in and lets it out slowly. And those of you with a passive perception above 17 can pretty, you're pretty sure you heard him whisper, Nine hells, they're going to kill us all. Oh, no. (laughs) We just, um, I have a passive perception of 18. Don't worry, Mo, we were told to keep that thing working as well. Okay, but if they didn't tell you anything... Oh, it's okay. We've been figuring it out. I I think we might want to do a game of 20 questions anyway, because figuring something out doesn't mean you know everything about it. Trust me, I'm a bard. Uh, Daldane, are you done getting the Magnificent Mansion ready? Oh, I'm sorry. Dazzling Dwelling, I believe you call it. Uh, As he says that, a door springs into existence. Your timing is impeccable. So, I have a brilliant idea. Let me know what you think about this. We've been playing for about an hour. What do you say we take a short break, and when we come back, we can play a game of 20 questions, without actually counting the 20 questions. That sounds an excellent idea, Zach. So we do have bacon inside. Ah, awesome. Gox told me about how good the bacon is in that. It's going to be great. You have two GIF lining up to follow you after the bacon. (laughs) <laughs> wait get for omnivores yeah in, in my world they are at least they're hippo people yes they are <laughs> okay so i'm gonna press some buttons and we will be right back
and now we're back from outer space. Literally. Yeah. 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 This time, the song actually fits. <laughs> and, okay, so I need to look at this, Jeff. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. <laughs> Dun, dun. <laughs> that is incredible. <laughs> oh, this old thing? It's uh yes, it's a sword made of light. Not very useful unless you want to, you know, be able to see in dark places. I don't know why I keep it around. Ooh. Let's put that away. Uh we were talking about <laughs> that doohickey that you have. Laser swords. No, no, not the doohickey that I've got. The doohickey that you all have on the moon. Mm. Please tell me you didn't crack it open to see what's inside. It's a no. kinder egg. We, we've worked very hard to keep other people from doing that. Yeah. Right. Okay, including, that's better. we think that's what the elves were going to do. Yep. Do not break open. Do not let out the blue smoke. Elves, were you going to do that? Well, they were attacking us. What about like... the blue smoke? I'm literally asking the elves that are with us. Oh. Um, I just knew the goal was to have the moon be a very large armada ship and go smashy oh. smashy. That's not going to happen. Well, we intercepted a few elves and a transformed giant. They were sneaking past the front lines to make a beeline towards the moon doohickey. And that's how we ended up in the astral plane. Pretty much. Yes, and I'm very grateful for that information, but also terrified about that information. Um, blue smoke bad. Yeah, some blue smoke came from somewhere and made a beeline for the doohickey. We were told there's a number of other things that, if broken, will release the blue smoke going to the doohickey, and we should try to prevent that. Yes, yes, that is something that will probably need to be done. I... I'm going to add that on my list of things in, to do. And it's got something sealed inside it, and um, it might be a... The, the, the degree of bad that the something is is unknown, probably. Yep. But well, I can tell you the thing that's God inside of it. it. We talked to a god, and he said he didn't know, so probably it's unknown. Oh, no, it's known. Oh! You, you, you know something the god of knowledge doesn't. Well... You realize there are gods of knowledge that are gods of knowledge in the sense that they want all the knowledge to be shared. There are also gods of secrets. Your connections scare me. I didn't say I communed with one of them, only that they exist. And when I started doing business with a certain clandestine group of dragonborn that happened to have a significant number of them on the moon, and they kept asking for strange parts to fix and or repair a device that was very expensive and yet they had the money to pay for it I started doing some digging and found out a few things and started against my better judgment offering them the tools needed to repair said device at a discount because it was relevant to my interests you do business with a lot of strange people, don't you? I'm a tiefling who enjoys leaning into the stereotype. I'll do business with anyone willing to do business with me. How's that working out? I mean, I'm fabulously wealthy. Well, there's that. Anyway, you said you know what's in the thingy. Can you tell us? Well, I don't know everything about what's in the... Do you call it the thingy? What, what's its actual... What have you been calling it? The half sphere. I call it a lot of things. What do you call it that's repeatable in polite company? Uh, Agma called it a lock. We call it the lock a lot too, but it's also like the control station for the moon being a station. So, but it's the lock. Okay, that part is not one of the things the Dragonborn knew. That's probably good. It probably is. Yes. Let. Let, let's file that away with excellent that they did not know. Let's not let the other Dragonborn know when they eventually return. Wait a minute. Do you have reason to think they're coming here? Oh, certainly. They left looking for you. For me? Uh, what? Well, not you specifically. 
Okay. They left to get I didn't the moon think back. I was famous or anything, but yeah, all right. Um, and then you came back without them. My assumption is they're still out there following your trail. Well, I can stand in line after whatever's left of the elves up here and all the giants. We'll get them. Well, we could hope they don't ally themselves with the elves on the other side of the sphere. Right now, it's currently locked, so they'll be out there together. It means they can't get in here. It does, until you have to open it again. Why would we have to open it again? How many kobolds are there? Uh, not as many as before, because they've been moved to the planet. Well, I'm including we're the planet. The, plan- the planet yeah. counts. I don't know. A lot? Okay. I've never counted them all. I, I don't know. A bunch of small, mostly small tribes scattered throughout the continents. And kind of hard to get an accurate count. And this circle of tales you have. Right. It has larger clans all over the multiverse. Am I right? Uh, there's a lot of them. How I, long everyone... until you need reinforcements? Everyone outside, they're stuck where they are. Yes. And when you reach a point where you need more kobolds, because reasons. Because more people are going to try to steal the moon. And there's still an elf armada carrier out there. When you undo the lock, that is the moment where a lot of bad is going to come in. Not evil, mind you. I don't believe in evil. But a lot of forces that are opposed to you are continuing holding on to the moon. Stars, though. Built by kobolds. I'm not disagreeing with you. You don't need to argue that point. The fact remains, there is more than one force that would like the moon to stop belonging to kobolds. It's possible they might team up. Temporarily, possibly. With every intention of double-crossing, most likely. And then we'll either get overwhelmed or we'll have to drive the moon into somebody. I mean, into a lot of somebody's. Please do not drive the moon into anyone. Trying to avoid it. That's a good idea. Let's have that be plan A. And, um, I wonder how the lock is linked to the moon. I mean, I mean, I know it's linked in, of course, but I wonder if it's linked in kind of like a, enough like a helm is linked in that we could make the lock go somewhere else. I mean, I think, I think people are going to keep coming after the moon, right? So... Since I don't think we can switch the moon for another moon, we need to figure out how to move the lock. That is something that, to be very honest, for everything I do know, I don't have an answer for you. I wasn't there when they built it, you understand. But I would hesitate before saying that relocating it was a good idea. Usually when there's something magical and technological that is integrated into a larger structure, removing it from that structure has negative repercussions. Well, obviously I'd study it a bunch more first. Yes, please do. And if any more blue smoke shows up, I recommend no longer following that train of thought. It's probably weak enough as it is. Uh, It's probably going to be hard to prevent more blue smoke. I'm going to add dealing with that on my to-do list. We will find a way. I... We'll find a way to deal with this lock that is causing so much trouble for everybody. Anyway, Mo, you said you know something about what the lock is imprisoning? It's it's not evil because, well, like I said, there's no such thing. It's just opposing force. But it's something that I was told was meant to be a safeguard. It was That's... meant to keep this... I can't gesture broadly enough. Everything inside this sphere, a secret. Well, it didn't work. No, no, it didn't at all. There's a very large population of a lot of beings here because the lock, as you call it, broke a bit. So so a safeguard would be something that would kill everybody? I mean, that would seem to be the easiest thing to do, to maintain the secret, yes. Anyone who knew about life being inside the sphere. Anyone who knew about anything being inside the sphere. I would rather it not get out. Most of the people I know are inside the sphere. What could be inside the sphere that's that big of a deal? I mean... And how do we fight it if it gets out? Again, I wasn't there when they built it. I was told that there were certain keys put in place to keep it where it is. These keys weren't physical in nature. 
but when manifested, they tended to reveal themselves as a copious amount of blue smoke. Yeah, I believe Agma mentioned Chroma has one. Wait, what? Who? Is that right? Uh, yeah, didn't Agma say that thing you found that opened the sphere was one of these things? Oh, the perfume thing? That thing? No, no. Wait, my key is a key? <laughs> no, 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 wait, 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 wait. My key to the spheres is a key to the lock? The box. The blue box thing that came out of the asteroid? Yeah, that my me? key to the spheres. That it's one. To the lock? Didn't, isn't Should that what it... on you now? Uh-huh. May I see it? I promise to give it back. Yeah, I, I could be misremembering what Agma says, said, but I believe that's what I mentioned. Do you hand over the cube? Mm, no. I hold it out, but I don't let go of it. Okay. Um, since you, you make can, it um, obvious that look. you're not going to let go, Mo does not make any effort to take it from you, but he does peer closely at it. Hmm. He pulls out a monocle and puts it on. And all of you, whether or not you choose to, are immediately thinking of Sniv. Oh. No. Uh, oh. Well, was it something I said? Nope. No. <laughs> don't worry about it. It's, it's better some... you don't know. <laughs> okay, well... He puts the monocle away. This is a key. It is not one of the keys. See, that's what I thought. If you broke this open, it would be bad, but it wouldn't be that bad. I mean, it'd be pretty bad for anyone nearby. Don't try it when I'm around. Oh, okay. Pretty bad. Someone's Breaking breaking near indestructible magical items is usually not a good idea. Daldane said Mo. Oh, sorry. I heard Chroma. Yes. Who made the lock? I don't remember. Oh. And that's yeah. not me being petty. That's not I understand. Me. No, I understand. I think I've done a really bad thing. Oh, 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 no, no, this is not from you. No, um, there is a magical thing that was done to make sure I don't remember. But this was long before you came on the scene. no. That's not what I'm talking about, because there's a Tarrasque on this planet. Oh, you noticed. And it's the reason why one half of the planet is a circle, and the other half of the planet is a mountain. It's an exit wound, yes. And I'm the one who woke it up. To be fair, it was likely only a matter of time. They brought in a Tarrasque to kill a god, and the god's only recourse was to throw a moon at the planet. Uh oh. So, but why would you need a safety? Why, why would that need a safety that involved killing everyone in the sphere? I mean, surely the Tarras would do a good enough job of that anyway. Maybe it's to kill the Tarras. And it's if the failsafe, it's. Tarrasque. I mean, tactically, if you can't kill it by any other means, it's you know? not to kill the Tarras. The Tarras can't be killed. Yeah, it's I was about to say if they oh. could have killed the Tarras using the failsafe, it seems like. They would have done that rather than throw the moon at it. It's to keep anyone else from doing anything to unleash the Tarrasque on another sphere or another god. Well, bright side, now we know how to get rid of the elf elf carrier. You do? Mm Mm-hmm. Please tell me you're not going to tie a giant balloon to Tarrasque, because it's been attempted. It didn't work (laughs) out well. (laughs) No. I think just telling them there's a Tarrasque on the planet might be enough to get them to go away. That I know we keep have them a moon that can the move atmosphere. and they still attack the moon that can move. You'd have to put the Tarrasque on the moon, and even then, that would be not much of a deterrent. I think their threat assessments are a little off. Um, also, to be fair, upper management is, like, really, really arrogant. <laughs> <laughs> When we talk about a high horse for the upper management, we're talking about, like, several several levels above orbit. I mean, that's literally and figuratively true. Except for the fact that we don't have horses. They don't do well in space or the flow. Wait a second, I should ask something. And I am not the only one who uh, had the thought about asking what I was about to ask about, apparently. Uh, as Cindy is saying in chat. Um... Because you know a whole lot of things about a whole lot of things. Do you know anything about these? Chroma holds up the pill. Oh, yeah, that thing. Huh. What is it? Um, it's a cipher. A cipher? 
With a Y. It's it's not a code. No, codes are not ciphers. Life will confuse the two. But I'm going off on a tangent. Where did you get that? I forgot exactly where I got them. Wasn't Is that the one that just showed up in Zenosha's garden? Probably. Oh, yeah, that's that, the one that yeah. showed up in Zenosha's yeah, garden. It just showed up out of nowhere. For the record, I had been tending that garden for weeks and had not seen it. Hmm. And she would know if it was something that had been there before. And had you the been one... to Flotsam recently? And the other one looks like a starfish. Uh, as of discovering that, yes, I believe we had just returned from the Flotsam. Mm-hmm. Yes, it was leaking. What was leaking? Um, trying to think of a good name for it. An Ark would probably be a good name. I don't think that's what they're calling it. Uh, the Ogmanites and Flotsam have been dealing with it. A uh, great big monolithic thing that was storing a lot of the civilization stuff that was here before the gods decided to try to kill the Tarask. Oh, wow. Really old. Yes. Um, and it it's so old that it was kind of leaking a little bit, and someone decided to help it along. Long story made shorter. A ragtag band of adventurers took care of that problem. Okay, so I'm trying to understand what this has to do with the little cipher, I think it was called. So, um... What is it? The civilizations that were here before the whole hit the planet with the moon thing were very advanced. They had a lot of technology that was rather indistinguishable from magic. And that little pill is one of them. One of the little bits of technology that they had. It leaked out from the Ark. Huh. What is it, like, for? What does it do? I don't it know. Just, it can't just be pretty, right? I mean, like, it's got oh, a, I know it what all it this does. tech. What does it do? Well, um, it came from an Ark, so its primary purpose was try to preserve a piece of that culture or its people or its animals. But yeah, Kuruma knows... It you can make people better at things for a little bit. I would not be opposed to trading for that. How would well, you like a bag of holding? Chroma I hear you're a short gives one. him a look. Hey, I'm a businessman. This is way more valuable than a bag of holding. Plus, I gave her mine. Okay. Let me know if there's something you want. Okay, well, we still need to figure out as much as we can about the lock so we can try to make sure it's working. We need to track down those things that, if broken, opens the lock, because... That's probably the best way to keep them from being broken by adventurers who don't know what they are. And we also need to figure out a way to get the elf armada to stop attacking the moon. And the Those are all three very big problems. Gotta get the giants out of here. It's pretty easy to fight that one that was, like, shrunk down. Can we, like, shrink the rest somehow? Some kind of magic thing? It's a lot harder to do when they re resist the magic. Okay. Cloud giants are fairly decent spellcaster. That's going to be a problem. Have you tried throwing heavy things at them? Not yet. I haven't gotten in range, really. Well, not safely in range. Yeah, we tried so, flying towards one and it wrecked our spaceship. They threw heavy things at us. Now we don't have a ship anymore. Pretty much. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe I could trade you a cipher for knowledge of a particular meteor impact, an adamantine meteor. That will somehow help us with the giants? If you have a mere suit of armor made of adamantine, it is incredibly durable. A weapon made of adamantine has been known to be able to shatter things that are thought unbreakable. A meteor made of adamantine. Could be reforged into... The hull of a spaceship. Chroma oh. holds out the pill. Let me draw you a map, and then I'll take the pill. Not hey. take the pill, but you, you know Don't what I meant. It. You're, like, oh, you're not oh, going to oh. eat it, right? Before no. You, before you yeah. um, pick it up, I should warn you. I was kind of warned not to have many of them at once. Apparently having a lot of them at once causes trouble, but also I don't have anywhere else to put them, so um, How I many was hoping do you have it wouldn't on be you? too that is that is a safe number. Does anyone else have a cipher on them? Not that I'm aware of. Not unless one appeared in my pocket at some point. Have you been to Flotsam in the past month? 
don't hmm. think so. I think we've been here more than a month. No, I had a show there about nine months ago. Okay. Then we're probably fine. But you do know how to make my heart skip a beat. And that's <sighs> saying something. So, um, and Mo pulls out a piece of parchment and starts roughly sketching circulus on it. Not all circulus, but you can tell he's specifically pointing out a portion of the main continent that you all know. That's the, the crescent shape. Mm-hmm. And there is a spot in the southern part of Circulus where he put he draws in a few landmarks and points out that there's a crater in an area that doesn't seem to have a lot of settlements nearby based on Daldane's basic understanding. Um, let's put it this way. Daldane has put on concerts in a field outside of a small farming town. And there weren't enough people in this particular area of Circulus for Daldane to put on a show. Wow. Hey, I remember that place. It was, what was its name? It had a funny name. Um, Middle of Nowhere? Oh, it's, it's gonna, no, it's going to come to me. Honestly, I wasn't given a name when I was told about this location. So I'm all ears. No, I, this is three, three years ago. Almost played a set there. Um, it'll come to me in just a second. Anyway, the only sign of civilization that's anywhere near there is a tower that used to be owned by a red dragon. That's such a funny name. The dragon had a funny name. I mean, who's ever heard of a dragon named Fred? Huh? Okay, so once we get the map, we should probably take a long rest. Have Dolph Dane teleport us to Fiddlepunch's tower, because we left an angel ship there. Then we can use the angel ship to let Daldane resume our concert and fly to the meteor. And once we've confirmed it's still there, if we can't tow it, fly back to the moon and talk about, can't believe I'm saying this, talk to Sniv about retrieving the meteor and forging it into a new spacecraft for us. You won't be able to tow it. You will be able to mine it and take up pieces at a time. What do you need to mine? A skilled crew of dwarves. Um, a gnome with a penchant for explosives. One of them will be more eager to deal with you than the other. The other will be safer. So we should ask Fiddlepunch if he can help us break down the mine or the asteroid. In any case, I've done my end of the bargain. Hmm? That's what it was called. The Timber Reserve. What an odd name. It, 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 It was so weird. Anyway, I... One second, I think I've got mail. <laughs> Sorry, that was me. <laughs> Mo pulls out a, a, a small book and looks in it. Minion memes. Why do people keep posting these to my wall? Closes it and puts it away. Anyway, I've done my end of the bargain, and now for your end. And he holds out his hand palm up. Yeah. Um. Sorry. 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 Um. It. It was me, and I was was looking at it. Uh. <laughs> The good news is I edit out all the silent pauses <laughs> and have to put Chroma, some in because they're relevant to the story. Chroma puts the pill in Moe's hand. It is honestly a pleasure doing business with you. Uh, you are, in terms of financial compensation, getting out with a much better deal than I am. Um, as I imagine, this is a one-time use thing. And... A meteor made of adamantine is certainly not. But I think I have a vested interest in you succeeding. So I'm quite okay with this token payment. I'm just not going to keep this with the others, that's all. Thank you for all your help. The pleasure is mine. I don't get thanked as often as... I was going to say as often as I feel I deserve it, but that sounds rather egotistical of me. Hey, I I don't get thanked as much as I feel I deserve it either. I, you know, I the end of every show i thank people who came because that's what you got to do but they should thank me for putting on a show that's all i'm saying i mean i've seen your concerts i agree thank you for putting them on well thank you i'm glad i could make your day a little brighter you definitely did i look forward to the next time you're playing anywhere near plantain i will send you a note i appreciate that so if you don't mind i am going to have to go have a conversation with a couple of anthropomorphic hippos with a penchant for military ranks and weapons that explode about why their ship 
is currently still docked with an elf armada carrier while we are planet side. Hmm. This might require a significant number of persuasion checks. I wish you the best of luck. Need any help with those uh, persuasion checks? Well, I do believe they're finishing off the last of this dazzling dwelling's bacon, so they might be in a favorable mood. Okay. Smash cut to 30 seconds later. You what now? (laughs) And that's where we're going to end it. (laughs) Thank you, everyone, for playing. Thank you, everyone, for listening. I have been Crash. Tonight we've been joined by a bunch of awesome people, including Ellie, Eo, Jen, and Cindy. Wait, Ellie was here? (laughs) Yeah, I I told her you were here. And so she showed up. Something about you owing her money? Yeah, exactly. I'm trying to avoid her. (laughs) Well, I owe her money, so I figured it was fair game. But never mind. Fair cop. Yes. Um, Arshbreath was hanging out in chat as well. Is there anything that anyone wants to plug? (laughs) USB-C. <laughs> I'm holding out for USB-C++. <laughs> Firewire. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that takes me back. <laughs> the, the problem is, after you get USB-C++, then you're going to get USB-C sharp. And people are just going to cut themselves on that. <laughs> yeah, but you see, it's compatible with USB flat. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> I got nothing to come back from. <laughs> I win. Oh no. Also, hey, did you hear that there's this great website that has a blog and podcast? You should check it out at bookofgen.net. And there's someone else who writes really awesome books. You can get those at elizabeth-mccoy.com. I'm going to have to renew that domain name pretty soon. And I think <laughs> which one? elizabeth-mccoy.com. Oh, a site. <laughs> <laughs> I I was unaware that you were the one who managed it. Oh, um, yeah. I run that site. <laughs> and we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash cogwheelgaming. You can help us keep the lights on, along with other illustrious patrons, including Chris, Ellie, Eric, Janadalok, Mickey, Shanchen, and Walter. And until next time, this is Crash saying, well, you know, while I'm on this side of the world, I might as well see the sights. Wait, who's that dragon board coming over here? Aww. Good night, everybody. Aww. Good night.